Hello, my name is Paul Tranny, and I want to take you through Adobe Edge Animate. Like its name implies, you can create animation with it. You're creating animation using web standards, so you're talking HTML, JavaScript, you know, some CSS is what you can implement as well, but it could be any HTML content. But don't let the name be deceiving because you can also add interactivity. So you can have interactivity uh, using JavaScript for your content as well, just to create some really compelling experiences. And I'm going to start off just by creating a new file. Now notice there are in-app lessons as well, but I'm going to create a new file. And from here, look, I first get my stage. Okay, so here's my stage, this untitled HTML document, and I can jump in here and maybe change the background color. Happens responsively exactly the way you think it would. In fact, I can even change that stage size to about 900 by 450. Works the way you think it would work. I can use Adobe Keys, so I can, excuse me, Adobe Keys, Adobe Shortcuts to zoom in and zoom out just like you would in other programs. And there we go. I'll show you how it's different from other software is the fact that when I save this file, I'm actually going to save this as an HTML file. So I'm going to save this index.html file to my desktop. And again, this is not a binary format at all. It's not saving out a PSD or an AI file or anything like that. It actually saves out an HTML file. Now, when I go in this folder, notice there is an edge file. That actually is just some of the metadata as well as like, you know, uh, telling you where the marker is, but it's just edge specific content. It's not needed. Okay. This is the file that's been created as well as these other files. And what this also means is you can actually open up your own HTML content in Edge and add animation and interactivity to it as well. So here's my HTML file. And what that does is it also uses these other files. So there's this Edge Actions JavaScript file. So as I add interactivity, it will appear in here. If I take a look at this Edge JS file, Oh look, as I scroll down, you can see, oh there's my, there's my stage where I've changed the background color, the height, the width. Okay, so you'll start to see elements appear in here. But this is like 1K, so the fact that it generates these various files, don't freak out at, at, its, uh, at the number because they are pretty small. And then there's some edge includes because it uses jQuery as well. Alright, so uh, let's get back into edge. From here, I can create elements. In fact, I can use the rectangle tool, and I can draw, you guessed it, a rectangle. Yes, that's right. I've drawn a rectangle, and let me just zoom out a little bit and kind of get that positioned like that. Notice how it lines up those items accordingly to, uh, to the background in this case. And I can just stretch it out like that. Okay, so I've adjusted it visually, but you can also use your properties panel to change its position as well as its size. In fact, its color. You guys get the idea how this is working. Okay, so from there, I even have that hex color that I can punch in, just hitting enter. All right, so there's that shape. I can start to draw other shapes if I want to. Again, if I draw another quick little rectangle over here and make this one red just like as an accent that I'm gonna have right over here okay moving beyond that I can use the text tool and from here you guessed it guys I can add text so I can just draw a text box something like that adding in some text I'm just pasting that in by the way there's some text I can add I can start to change the color just like that and check this out right down here I love this coming down in here Oh, no shadow? Well, I think not. Turning that on, I can add a drop shadow, which is what it just did, okay? A, a black drop, sh drop shadow with a, a slight blur. So I can blur that out a little more just to make that stand off a little more from that background, okay? And uh, it's great. Uh, as I take a look at these items, I can see this is a CSS text shadow that's being used. Okay, so this will work across browsers, so it does actually uh, implement the appropriate code to make this work across browsers. All right, so the text uh, looks pretty good right there. I can add some more text. Uh, in fact, if I just use the text tool again, Albert Einstein said this quote, by the way. And from there, I can increase the size, maybe change the 
color of this text as well, right in here, to that same gray, like that. But I'm starting to notice that uh, I'm not impressed by these fonts, okay? And as a designer, you want as much creative freedom as possible, okay? And I want to go beyond these system fonts. Luckily, I can add fonts in here. So selecting Add Font, I can add a web font. This is great because I can use something like Typekit to implement my own font, okay? So going beyond system fonts, I can use Typekit. So here I am in Typekit, and notice I've already logged in, and you can log in for free and create an account, all that good stuff. And you can start to sort these fonts accordingly, maybe by serif or the even the properties associated with that font, which is great. I love I love Typekit. So let me launch my Kit editor because as you add to your kit, they will appear in here. And from here, what I can do is uh, I can start to use these fonts. Okay, so I have quite a few in here. In fact, I kind of like, I got some really elaborate ones. In fact, what I want to do is I want to use this Kegger font. But regardless of what font I want to use, I need to add this embed code in the upper uh, right. So these are the two lines of JavaScript you need. Just copy those lines jump back into edge animate pasting that code in and then you type in the name the font family as I roll over that that's you, what you see there it says uh, please use the font family well let's take a look back here in typekit right in here I'm using Kager for that specific font if I use that font in CSS you can see that's what it is in fact I can say Kager US and use that serif serif font as a default okay so jumping back in there just pasting that in adding that font you'll see it adds that font in there just like that okay so you can really see that looks looks pretty good I can even increase the font size like I'm gonna do like this kinda like that make this look pretty good uh, maybe make it flush right like that all right, so that looks pretty good, but notice that it did use that font. I can add other custom web fonts that will start to appear in this list right here, all by adding fonts. All right, so I've created elements, uh, you know, basically some, some basic shapes that I can then start to customize more, even just by, say, curving out the corners if I want to, things like that, maybe opposite corners for this item, giving it that sort of teardrop shape. Uh, you can also add text, whether it's text with a drop shadow, elements with a drop shadow, or even text that has a custom web font. You can add that stuff in. Lastly, and probably what you're going to do the most, is you're going to be importing items. Okay? So I'm going to import some items here. They're going to be some images. These are going to be uh, web web uh, web friendly images, if you will. So ping files, JPEG files, GIF files, things like that. I'm going to take this Einstein JPEG, nice picture of this handsome man, right there. Just place him just like that. That looks good. In fact, let's import one more. This time, I'll just import this chalkboard, as you can see right here. So it's pretty straightforward what I'm going to uh, import. It's a JPEG, placing that in. Okay, obviously this isn't going to work because this is in front of everything. Well, I can right click on it and arrange just like you wanted it would in a, any other program, whether it's PowerPoint, whatever the case may be, and I can send it to the back. So watch what happens in my elements panel, because look, this stacks everything uh, just by default, one on top of the next, but when I say send to back, it'll send it to the back and it appears in the bottom of my list. Okay, and that's how you can start to readjust elements uh, is by just taking them and moving them, say, forward or back or even nesting items but that's how you can control the depth of all of your items okay alright so there's my there's my background I'd say that uh, you know that overall looks looks pretty good uh, the way I have it set up um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust it first of all its position is gonna be zero zero and I'm gonna make sure that it's 900 pixels by 
450 pixels like that. Okay, now it fits in there just fine. All right, with that all said and done, I'm going to save this file and I can even preview it in a browser. And here it is in a browser, pretty straightforward. And uh, that is your first lesson with uh, Edge Animate, bringing in elements as well as creating elements in Edge Animate. And the next step is to start to add some animation and even make this content scalable.